I know you guys watched last week's video of the Beartooth device. It's linked down below. So right now you absolutely know that you must have a Beartooth. You're probably going right now and using code OUTLAW to get $1,500 a pair, $750 a piece. It's not gonna work if you don't use code OUTLAW. But you know that you need this for your family. You know that you need this for your plan. Now you're trying to learn to navigate it and you need a step-by-step -step process of how to put them together, how to use them. It's very easy to do. So Michael, thanks for coming back again for this week. Oh, thanks for having me. And so just kind of give a brief overview of what you're about to show them. So we're about to show them how to use your Beartooth from the absolute first step to advanced features. And we know how frustrating it is when you get a new piece of equipment and the instructions start at the fourth or fifth thing. We're gonna start at the very beginning of baking this cake. So what you guys are gonna be able to do is go down into the description and we'll have it broke down. So that way, I know each of these things takes a couple of minutes to learn and it's, it's a, a major focus on how to point out your conflict problems, your bad guys, plan a route, set your map up. And we'll have them broke down for you so that as you go, you won't get lost. You can always go back. And if you're just having a, an issue with one, you can go in there. And then if you guys are having issues after you get your bare tooth, send us an email. And then what we will do is we'll get Michael back out here for a frequent asked questions and we'll just put all this together. So hold on tight. I know some of you, you're not communication guys. So this is going to be, it's going to be a little, it's tough, but you guys know you have to have this. So stick around. You are not prepared without a communications plan. Previously, there was no way to build your own secure, easy to use encrypted mesh network. Well, we've been building exactly those types of networks for the special operations community for the last several years. We're bringing that technology to you in the civilian market so that you can build your own secure encrypted mesh network for times when cellular networks have failed or unavailable. Hey, it's Michael from Beartooth. We're gonna show you the optimal way to set up your Beartooth plus ATAC system. First thing you do, please get your Android phone, get it handy. Second of all, get your printed copy of the Beartooth Quick Start Guide so you can follow along. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to the Google Play Store and we're gonna download both the Android Tactical Awareness Kit and the Beartooth Mark II plugin. So come with me while we go to the Google Play Store. So I'm in Google Play and I type in Android Tactical Awareness Kit, and I hit Install, so it's downloading right now. Use the same process for iPhone, although for iPhone you're going to download iTac. So next, you're going to download the Beartooth Mark II plugin. That's downloading now. Now that you've got both of them downloaded, let's open up ATAC and get started. So the first thing you want to do is you want to agree to all permissions. So for example, if it says allow ATAC to take pictures and record video, yes. There'll be about 10 screens asking you various permissions. Answer allow to all of those. So you're going to get to a, a screen that says TAC device setup and plugins. You're going to go ahead and click on plugins. You're going to see Beartooth Mark II is not loaded. You're going to check the box to load it and agree to load it. You use the left arrow to get back to the main screen. Hit done. Hit OK. Hit allow. And you're going to see the red Beartooth rings. Now, pick up your radio and you'll note that the power switch when it's close to the antenna is off but away from the antenna is on. So you're going to turn your Beartooth on. You're going to see that your Beartooth 0053 serial number, when you click on the red rings, you're going to see 0053 is available to connect to. You're going to connect to that device. Now that you're connected to your Beartooth, you're ready to start walking through some more functions. You're going to hear me talk about Beartooth settings and ATAC settings. Beartooth settings are found by 
clicking on the red or green rings. ATAC settings are found by clicking on the three horizontal bars at the top. So in this case, let's go to ATAC settings. Click on the three bars, scroll all the way down to settings that looks like the gear. Click on call signs, click on call sign preferences, click on my call sign, and let's go ahead and update the call sign. In my case, let's make it Michael and then BTR as an abbreviation for Beartooth Radio. So we're gonna go ahead and save that and we're gonna use the left arrow to get back out to the main menu. We're gonna see that we're connected to the green rings. Now let's go ahead and make sure that we're on the desired network. So now you can see a few basic settings. We see we're on network 5150. That's the default Beartooth network. And we're gonna leave it on that because that's what our team's running on today. You're gonna see a GUI box right below that. GUI box is graphical user interface to turn on encryption. So you could click on that, which we will. And now it'll say, enter your encryption key. So maybe we've decided that our team encryption key is alpha bravo 12345678. You'd enter that key. You'd make sure that everyone on your network enters that key into their ATAC device. And now your Beartooth ATAC network is running on an encrypted network. So for the rest of today, we're gonna to leave it unencrypted, but that's how you'd run an encrypted network. Okay, now that we're up and going and connected to our Beartooth, and our friends are connected to their Beartooths, let's go ahead and go into contacts. Contacts are the, the uh, look like three heads in your ATAC. So I've just, I've just clicked in there and I see that there's some, other, there's some other Beartooths on the network. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on Beartooth Broadcast and say hello to make my presence known to the other folks Beartooth on the Beartooth Broadcast Network. Message from Michael BTR, hello. We now hear that. And now the, the, the other user on the network will respond to me. Broadcast group message from Bansaw, ABC, hello. So now we've, we've used our first messaging across the Beartooth Mesh Network. We're several pages into the Quick Start Guide, so let me get us advanced up there so that we can follow along in the guide as well. So one of the tools that we do in, in the Beartooth is location sharing. So what you'll see if you go into Beartooth settings, again, click on the green rings, you'll see share my location is turned on turn it off momentarily to see that, turn it back on. And since we're gonna be moving pretty rapidly with a small team, let's maximize our refresh rate. So you're gonna see that I've set the minimum distance to three meters and the minimum interval update to five seconds. That means my position will update the faster of three meters of movement or five seconds and broadcast that out to the remainder of the group. You'll also see down in the left hand side of the contact and message screen, you'll see what looks like a target. If you push that target, you can manually send a message to the rest of the group. And then finally, again, if we want to send a text message like we've done before, I'm going to send hello again. Beartooth broadcast group message from Michael BTR, hello. And this time I'm going to click on the information and it's going to say delivered to Bandsaw ABC. One of the great things about the Beartooth network is we give you confirmation receipts of whoever your message is delivered to. Okay, so we've set up our Beartooth. We have changed our call sign. We've sent a group broadcast message, a text message. So now let's send a synthetic message. So we have the ability to click tap to speak, say something, Google Translate will send it as a text message across the network. Let me show you how that works. The chair is on the table. But we also have the ability to send a traditional key down push to talk message like you're used to on your VHF radio. Com check. Com check five, four, three, two, one, over. Com check five, three, two, one, over. So with that, we've now demonstrated how you can send uh, a basic text, text message, a, a, a speak to tap, a, a tap to speak message, and a regular voice push to talk message. One of the other tools that we think is super helpful in ATAC is the ability to send a marker. So let me show you how to send a marker. So a marker is the point dropper in the menu. You'll see that from your menu bar at the top. So let's go ahead and zoom in on the map here where we're located. And we're gonna go ahead and mark a, an unfriendly location just adjacent to us. So we're gonna click on the point dropper. We're gonna 
grab the, the, red di the, the, the red diamond to signify an unfriendly position. We're gonna drop it on the map. We're gonna go ahead and hit send. And then we're gonna say to the Beartooth Broadcast Group and send again. And now it'll be populated on other devices in the network. So if we go look at our companion device here, uh, on the, we now see that Michael BTR has dropped a marker on the map. Now, let's say that we want to egress away from that uh, unfriendly point. So I'm going to go ahead and show a route out of our current location. So I'm going to build a route out of our current location, how we can egress the building we're in and get to a safe location on a predefined route. So we're going to go into ATAC settings and we're going to go down and find the route tool. We're going to do a new route. It's going to be a walking route. We're going to do a manual entry and we're just going to draw a route out of where we're at. Then we're going to hit end. Then we're going to hit send. Beartooth broadcast, same thing. That's going to go ahead and send that route to the rest of the members of our group. Now sometimes a picture says a thousand words. So I'm going to demonstrate how to send a picture. So same thing, we're going to left arrow back to the main screen. Now we're going to go into ATAC settings and we're going to go to quick pick. That's how we're going to take a quick picture. So we're going to take a picture of our setup and we're going to go ahead and send that to the rest of the group. So we're going to hit send. Beartooth Mark II, Beartooth Broadcast, and send again. Now, this is a pretty mid-bandwidth network. It doesn't have a lot of capacity. You know, it's not the high-speed broadband pipes that you have over LTE or, or your fiber at home. Uh, think old dial-up modem speed. So one of the cool things that we have is a progress bar that you can go ahead and see how long it's going to take for that picture to broadcast across the network. You can see it in real-time broadcasting, and you'll note that it's about 20 seconds to send a picture. So we'll just let that picture go through to our companion device. So great, now over on the companion device, we see the same picture that we, that we took a picture of. Now, let's say that uh, we have some new people joining our group or, or maybe we need some additional information. We can do something called send a data package. First thing we're gonna do is go back into ATAC settings, the three bars. We're going to build a data package to send. So in this data package, we're going to mark an unfriendly point, a friendly point, and a route to, to get out of the building. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to mark the unfriendly point. So we mark that on the map. Then secondarily, we're going to mark the friendly point that we're trying to get to. We've marked that on the map. Then, then we're going to go to our route tool and we're going, to, we're, going to, we're going to make a route to get to that friendly point while avoiding the unfriendly point. We're going to walk. And we've made a small route to get from our current location to the friendly point. So now what we're going to do is we're going to end that. And we're going to use a tool called Lasso Select to take a, to grab all of the objects in our view. We're going to Lasso Select them. We're going to export them as a data package. We're going to include attachments. We're going to go new. We're going to build it. Now we have Michael BTR data package. We're going to go ahead and send that data package to the other Beartooth users via Beartooth broadcast. And now it's sending and we'll see that that data package will soon populate on the companion device. So now we have the unfriendly point, the friendly point, and the route that we're taking uh, out of the building to the friendly location. All right, the next thing that we want to do is what you probably have seen by now is you'll see a Beartooth broadcast group and maybe see the ability to send a direct message to your friend. But what if you want to uh, create a custom talk group like red group or blue group? So now we'd go into Beartooth settings and we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna say, add a Beartooth group. And we're just gonna call this one blue group. Oops, a little typo, let's fix that.
and we're going to add, we've only got one other device on network. If we had multiple devices, we could select more than one. So we're going to add Bandsaw ABC to the group. So now, uh, Bandsaw is going to see on their device that they've been added to Michael BTR's blue group. And if we go back out, we'll now see that you have um, both Beartooth broadcast message, you've got direct messages, and now you've got Beartooth groups. So we can go in there and we can go to the blue group and we can send, send a message to hello blue group. Okay, so we've now shown you how to set up a, a, a Beartooth group as well. One of the other important functions that we talk about is a breadcrumb. So a breadcrumb is basically a Beartooth with no phone attached to it. You might want to put that on a drone, put it on a water tower, really get it up in the air and that's going to allow you to really extend your range. So what you want to do is you want to take your device that has no phone attached to it, you want to place it where you need to be, then you're going to go into Beartooth settings, which are the green rings, and you're going to click on Add Beartooth Device on Map. Once you're in there, you're going to go ahead and scan it and take a picture of it, and that's going to populate that device onto the map for you. So let's just show how to do that. So we're going to add Beartooth map Device on Map. We've scanned it, and now we're going to hit Send. We're going to send it to the entire Beartooth group, Send, and now that device will populate on everyone's map so they can see where that breadcrumb has been placed. So we have another tool that we like to use called the hardware or range test. And what that does is that makes sure that both of your Beartooth hardware is functioning uh, properly. So let's go into Beartooth settings. Let's click on range test. Let's do a range test with Bandsaw ABC, the other device. We're going to hit OK. So what we're going to do is we're going to put two devices. We're going to stand them up a couple feet apart on the table. And you're going to see they have an RSSI value of negative 40. That's good. Now let's take one and take it out of polarity, put it behind our back. If there's something broken on the device, you'll see the RSSI value change. These are two good devices, so the RSSI value isn't changing. So you've now conducted a successful range test to see that your Beartooth devices are well within spec and functioning properly. So we're going to go ahead and stop the range test. Now, this is probably one of my favorites because it's one of the most important things you can do, which is load a detailed map in prior to heading out on your mission. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go up into the maps, which is the, the trifold button, and you're going to choose uh, the type of map you want to pull in. I happen to like Google Satellite. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to, we're going to hover over an area that we want to pull in. And we're going to get that area in the view. Then we're going to go into map sources. Uh, so we're going to get the, the, the area that we want into view. Then we're going to, there's a little right arrow next to map, map source. We're going to right arrow. It's going to bring a menu to hit select area. We're going to hit select area. We're going to hit lasso select. We're going to circle the area we want to download. Then we're going to go ahead and hit download. We're going to give it a name. We're going to call it the, a, the area of operation, the AO. Then we're going to hit OK. Now you're going to see that those tiles get pulled in. We did a really small map. It's only going to take a few seconds. A large map could take you all day. So if you want a highly detailed map over a very large area, give yourself a half a day or day to pull this whole map in. So we've just pulled in this small map and now we've got it saved. So if you go into imagery and you go into Google Satellite, you'll see that I've saved the new AO. That's our new map that we've just pulled in. You'll see I've also saved a bunch of maps from, from uh, previous missions that we've done. So with that, we've shown you how to load detailed maps. That is the end of our guide on how you to get you to set up not only your Beartooth network, but optimize your ATAC and using ATAC with Beartooth. I appreciate you listening today. We really hope that you're enjoying your new Beartooth radios. Absolutely leave a comment below if you'd like, or reach out to us via support at Beartooth.com, and we'd be happy to answer any of your questions.